mm-hmm. one of our personal favorites here on the Get Right, and he covers Major League Baseball for the Athletic. Writer of the Windup, you can find him on Twitter at three two Ephus. He is our guy, Levi Weaver. Levi, what's going on? So when when that happened with Adolis, were you guys thinking to yourselves like, okay, the Rangers have to win this game now because if they lose, and that was a factor, there was never. We we would all just have to move to a different state. I think <laughs> everyone who has ever even mentioned the Rangers would have to leave the state. It would just be called this the state of Houston at that point. If that had been the difference in the in the ALCS, uh, I feel so like that would have been the ultimate. In my, in my sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I no, feel like I just, you had me back in my in my anxiety there for a second. Okay, that that play out. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I feel like that would have been the ultimate if you somehow fumbled the brick in that way. Right, you that would have been the ultimate y'all loss situation because you don't hit two home runs with all these <laughs> R, RSBI and be like, well, mm-hmm. you were the reason why. No, I wasn't. Like I, that would be the way I, right. I handled it personally if I was a Dulles. But of course, we don't have to worry about those circumstances because they handled the Astros very well, eleven to four. Uh, what was what was the thing like? Kind of what was the thing that caught you the most over the course of this ALCS? Like what was, what was the defining, I don't know, statistic or defining like, you know, observation for you through this? So there were a couple of things. Uh, the one, the obvious one is, is Adolis Garcia. And I, I remember thinking, I, you know, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, but we started to kind of get a, a sense with him that when there was a big moment, when the game was on the line and he was up late, it just seemed like time and again, really start to shine and I remember thinking like oh man if he sticks around long enough that the Rangers get good and he plays in the playoffs this is going to be a lot of fun like he's going to be very good in the playoffs this is going to be like Randy or Rosarena like those two are peas in a pod where we the Rangers have this Randy or Rosarena figure on their team already and nobody knows it yet and sure enough I was right he came up big all the home runs the you know the, the dramatics the flair that was obviously the you know that was amazing to watch, um, and then the second one was uh, the Nate Evaldi and and Jordan Montgomery. Those two guys, you know, if you if you'd given me a blind uh, list of every pitcher who had started a game for the Texas Rangers in 2023, you know, back a year ago, and said, and by the way, they make the World Series, which which of these pitchers do you think is going to be the big difference? I'd be like, okay, first of all, Jake Degrom. That has to be it, be it. And oh, they traded for Max Scherzer. Wow. Well, yeah, those two guys. That's definitely going to be their one, two. Uh, no, it's Evaldi and it's Jordan Montgomery. Both of those guys were nails. Uh, Montgomery. They got all of the wins in the series. There was they were the winning pitcher. One of those two guys in every single one of the of the games. So for those two guys to to have come in and, and made the difference that they did, I, I, you cannot win without good starting pitching, and and they definitely provided it. Levi, I want to take this to Bruce Bochy because this is a man who has now taken three different franchises to the World Series. And when he was hired this past offseason, there was a collective thought that he could possibly be the guy to really turn this thing around. But I don't think we any, any of us saw it coming this quickly. What were your thoughts just as you observed this team throughout the season and now their postseason run about the job that Bruce Bochy's done for this team? Yeah, I, you know... I, it, it's always hard for me to quantify what makes a good manager because most of the time, you know, even when I was covering the team and in the clubhouse every day, you know, you get your one hour a day where you get to go talk to the players, but you're not sitting in on the meetings. You know, you can sit and talk to the manager. You can get a sense of who he is as a person, but you don't get to sit in and listen to those one-on-one conversations that he has with the players. You don't, you know, you're, and then once the game starts, you're basically observing the same as everybody else. Like, oh, well, I don't know if that's a bullpen move I would have made, but, you know, you're not in the dugout listening to him explain it and, and, until later. So I've just kind of, it's been hard for me to quantify. And I think in games six and seven, for the first time in my life, I kind of sat back, sat back and went, oh, that's both of you. That's the reason. That's what's going on here. Because that game five loss was the sort of loss and this is, I, I don't mean this as any knock to Ron Washington, who was also a great manager, but when the Rangers lost game six in 2011, you just knew game seven, like, well, that's it. They're, they're done. They're toast. That's, they're, they're, they're not coming back from that. Game five felt a lot like that with the ninth inning, you know, the Altuve home run. And you just got that sense of like, well, the Astros are inevitable. That, that's it. It's been a nice run, boys, but this is, 
this is how it ends. Man, that sucks for the Rangers. Um, and then they came out in, in game six and they were calm and they, they came out and they won and everything was fine. And you could hear in the players, even, you know, in the, in the clubhouse after game five, players were disappointed. Sure. They were mad. They hate losing, but it wasn't that just morose, like funeral type setting. It was just guys going, all right, well, we got to go win two games. Here we go. And that to me, I think spoke a lot of the culture that Bruce Bochy has brought to the Rangers, that, that calm confidence that you hear about the, the fact that he's been there so many times before that he knows what it takes to get there. And man, that seemed a lot like a team, even after game five, Seemed a lot like a team that had a shot in game six. And, if, man, if you can win game six, well, then it's a crap shoot in game seven. Let's see who does it. And the Rangers did it and did it in a big way. Now, Levi, when it comes to this offense, I mean, you talk about being consistently there and being inevitable. That's how I felt about this offense. And, obviously, one of the best in baseball this season. I mean, over your course of time covering baseball, where does 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 this is it remind you of anything? Does this compare to anything that you've seen thus far? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it honestly, kind of reminds me of of other Rangers teams. You go back to that sort of late '90s squad that, and I get it. It was a different era back then, right? There's perhaps some some chemicals involved in those days that we do not have involved uh, in the game this <laughs> this year, but. But, you know, Rafael Palmero and Juan Gonzalez and Pudge Rodriguez, and, like, it was just guy after guy that would come to the plate, and you're like, well, yeah, he could probably hit the ball 450 feet. Um, that that was a punisher's row of, of, of hitters. And this Rangers lineup, I think, is probably deeper than that. You know, it's the fact that there's not – there's not one guy, you know, weirdly, Robbie Grossman is kind of the guy that anytime he's in the three hole, I roll my eyes a little bit. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> We've got you know, an entire lineup of all-stars and Robbie Grossman sitting third. But he's come through, you know, like he's done the job all right. So there's really not that many weak spots. And, you know, when your nine hitter is like, well, who's it going to be today? You know, Josh Young, who was an all-star. Is it going to be Leody Tavares, who's been a huge contributor in the play- playoffs? Like, there's, there's not a weak link. As we turn our attention to the World Series for this team, now back in it for the first time since 2011, what's the one thing that you have observed from this team that you know you can depend on for the most part when you get ready to see this team take on either the Diamondbacks or the Phillies in the World Series? Man, that is a great question because the answer is I I don't think there is anything. I mean, they were so streaky in the second half, right? Like they would go out and win eight games in a row and then they'd lose six in a row. And the, you know, the, pitching would be lights out and then the pitching would be blackout and then you know the offense would be on fire and then the offense would be burnt to a crisp like there was just no there was there wasn't a whole lot of consistency and then even in the playoffs right they win seven straight then they lose three straight now they've won two straight so i i really couldn't tell you one thing that i go oh they're definitely going to do this other than that you know i expect they're going to hit the ball well i expect they're going to score a lot of runs does that mean they're definitely going to? Absolutely not. They've, they've had stretches where they just don't. Um, I think they will. I, I think that either the Phillies or the Diamondbacks will absolutely have their hands full with this Rangers lineup. I think that they have gotten enough good starting pitching, and ideally Scherzer will get better as he continues to get more healthy. So the, you know, the pitching is getting better and getting more healthy. I think they, maybe John Gray is underutilized. Hopefully he's going to get a little bit more action in the, in the World Series. Um, but as to like what I can predict, what I definitely know about baseball and what will happen in baseball games, uh, nothing, zero. I never, <laughs> never <laughs> goes exactly how I have it planned. All right. Before I let you go, Levi, what's been your favorite part of the playoffs so far that you've been able to observe throughout the course of this postseason? Oh, just everybody getting to see who Adolis Garcia is. That's been absolutely far and away my favorite part. Um, he is just such a... I mean, good teammate. Everybody in the clubhouse loves him. He is a nice guy. He is. He's never been one of those that you know. I heard that he didn't speak to the media after Game Six, but that was like the first time that's ever happened. And he explained later, I was just so focused on Game Seven. Um, I don't want to say or do anything to get myself in trouble or get myself distracted. But he's been, you know, very professional, very kind. It's been fun to watch him work on his English, and then you know, he's the ALCS. MVP and gets the you know he, he did, did his interview on national television in English was really proud of him for that 
Um, but yeah, to see this guy who has come up in a lot of big moments in some very lost and losing seasons to now get to do that on, on the biggest stage in the sport, that's been really cool to watch. Now, Levi, you obviously with games being hosted at Globe Life Field, I imagine you're going to be showing up there. Um, how, how is your countenance going to be uh, perceived as you're taking in these games? Um, are you talking about my, my Halloween costume? Yep. 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 You knew exactly <laughs> yeah, what I meant. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. The hair's pretty yellow right now. Uh, it's kind of a secret. I will, I, I can't tell you exactly what's going on there, but, um, but yeah, it's going to be a weird one. I'm going to be, you know, the world, I, I didn't really think this through and dyed my hair completely bleached blonde just before the world series. So I'm going to have to come up with a good excuse uh, but the but the the real reason is it's for my Halloween costume. So can, can we blame you if bad things happen because you changed your hairstyle during the course of Rangers mm -hmm. run? No, because I did it just before Game Seven and they still won. So mm. this has nothing to do with me. Okay, all right. I tried. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I'm already catching flack because I started covering the team in 2016 and they made the playoffs that year, but lost to the Blue Jays and then had six consecutive losing seasons and it was like the Levi Weaver melancholy era. And then I leave and all of a sudden they go to the world series and everybody's like, my man, do not come back. Like, <laughs> <stay gone." laughs> you know what? All that meant was that the universe or whoever DD that you want to uh, assign it to knew that there was going to be a need for someone who was really great at finding good stories in the midst of maybe where there aren't the easiest stories to find. And that is Levi Weaver of the athletic. Yeah, thank you. 2017 through 2022, there was one set of footprints in the sand, and that was me losing my freaking mind watching the <laughs> losing game. <laughs> Appreciate oh, the time, man. man. Thank you. All right, take care, guys.